Hello, this is Keir from Zenforo. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a vanilla Windows 10 installation and add a development server and a development environment complete with a debugger that's all suitable for use with Zenforo in just a few minutes. We're going to do that with a combination of packages, the first of which is Laragon. Laragon is a WAMP uh, server. Uh, configuration, meaning that it's uh, Apache and MySQL and PHP all wrapped up for use with Windows. So uh, I would recommend that you download the Laragon Lite package from there. Uh, I've actually already done it. Let's grab hold of that and start the installer while I talk about it. Uh, a great thing about Laragon is that it's totally self-contained, so everything that it installs goes into one single directory rather than spewing itself all over the place. So if at any point you decide that you want to get rid of it, um, it's very easy. You just get rid of the Laragon directory and it done and everything dies. Um, there's no need to worry about it having put its stuff all over the place. Uh, I'm going to accept the defaults here apart from I don't really want Notepad Plus added to my um, menus. So we'll let that run. Once this is done, uh, we're going to do a little bit more configuration to uh, give it a debugger and uh, to make it work the way that we want to. Um, but it's nothing too arduous, so uh, let's get on with that as soon as it's finished. And it's almost done. Almost. It's done. Let's let it run. And you'll notice that it puts up a new icon in your system tray. Uh, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go and uh, tell it to add Laragon to my path. What this will do is it will allow me to run any of the binaries that Laragon has installed, like MySQL or PHP, uh, from the command line without having to specify a path. It also means that applications can find those uh, things without having to add any more configuration. So I'm going to add Laragon to the path, and it's done. And then I can open a command line. Um, it's important to note that this has to be a fresh terminal. Uh, it can't be one that was already running because otherwise it won't have received those uh, new path updates. But from here, we should be able to run uh, something like PHP minus V to get the version. And there it goes. Now, the next thing I want to add is Xdebug, which is a brilliant debugging tool written by Derek Rethans for PHP. But Xdebug has a different version for every different version of PHP, and we need to know exactly which version we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out um, a copy of my PHP info uh, from, the from the command line into my documents directory. So PHP info, uh, which you've probably seen on the web, um, also has a command line version. It's PHP minus I, uh, but I want to capture that input, so I'm going to put it into uh, documents slash info.txt will do. That's now done. Let's open up a new one of those and find out what's in my uh, my documents folder. There we are. And if I open that up, here is the complete PHP info. So I'm going to copy that whole lot. I'm going to come across to this tab here. It's the xdebug wizard. Um, and I'm going to paste in my XD, uh, my PHP info in there and tell it to analyze. And it, it works out exactly what is going on with this server and it gives me the correct file to download. Now, it's telling me that I need to move that into the Laragon directory, but I'm just going to right click and save the link as and put it straight into the Laragon directory. So let's go for that. It's in C, Laragon, uh, bin, PHP, and then PHP with the version number and X for extensions. I'm going to save it in there. And now I'm going to grab hold of this line here, which is a uh, command for my PHP ini file, and come back to my Laragon window, right click again, PHP ini, and it's going to let me edit the PHP ini file. Open that out and come down to the bottom, and I'm going to put that directive in there. Uh, just pasting it straight in and I also need these lines here uh, the remote enable and remote, remote auto start line so I'm going to copy all of that and come back to my PHP ini and paste it in there so now I've got xdebug um, the directives and the path so let's save that out and quit and now if we uh, go back to Laragon 
and tell it to start all, then we should find that everything is up and running. We need to allow it to go through the firewall for the various bits and pieces that it's got. And I what's that doing? That's just more firewall stuff as MySQL starts. That's all fine. So let's uh, go to the web page that it's opened. Here it is, and it's uh, created a PHP info file for me. And what I'm expecting is that, here we go, uh, it tells me that I've got Xdebug installed. That's great, that's all up and running and ready to go. So the next thing to do is to get a development environment set up. And for that, I'm gonna be using Microsoft Visual Studio Code, which is a very uh, capable editor, um, but also has the ability to add all sorts of extensions to turn it into a really very, very capable integrated development environment, or IDE. So let's go grab that. I've uh, already downloaded it uh, into my downloads folder. Uh, it's, again, a very quick installer. So let's just let it go. Happy with all of that. I'm going to say yes to all of these final options there and let it run. And let's let it launch. Here we go, all up and running. Now, the first thing I need to do here is to go and change a few preferences to the way that I like it to work. Uh, this is entirely down to you as to whether or not you do that, but uh, I like to have autosave turned on on focus change, meaning that if I'm editing a file and then I click away maybe to go into a browser window, it will automatically save any dirty windows. <clears throat> dirty windows being those that have had changes that aren't saved. I want that. <clears throat> and I also want the debug toolbar to be docked, not floating. That's all I need to do in terms of settings, but I do need to add some extensions. So I'm gonna click onto this button here for extensions. And the ones I want are, first of all, I want Visual Studio IntelliCode. Then I want a couple of PHP extensions. I want IntelliFence and PHP Debug. And then I want the MySQL tools uh, for MariaDB, uh, sorry, the SQL tools for Mar Maria and MySQL, and then I'll install those. And you'll note that uh, it brings up a new tab here for SQL tools. Uh, that's all great. And finally, I just need to go and disable the built-in PHP language extensions because they are, um, may, they are superseded by PHP IntelliFence. So manage and disable. That's all looking good. So the next thing to do is to check that we are uh, ready to, to run. So I'm gonna open a folder um, and give it the Laragon www directory. Select that and now it opens a workspace for that folder. The next thing we're gonna do is make sure that our newly installed server and environment is configured properly for Zenforo. The first thing that we've got to do is make sure that it can actually run Zenforo at all. And we'll do that with the Zenforo requirements scripts that I've downloaded from zenforo.com. Uh, I've downloaded and extracted it. I'm going to move the PHP file into my web root and then we can run it on the web server. So it's uh, Zenforo requirements.php. Thankfully, uh, my server meets all of Zenforo's PHP requirements, but we also need to check MySQL. So let's do that on the command line. Uh, because we added all of those binaries that Laragon added to our environment path variable, we can just run them without any kind of uh, file name qualifier. So we'll just run MySQL and then we need to tell it that we are the root user. So minus u root, and here we go, it's server version 5.74. Uh, no, it's not, it's 5.7.24, but that's perfectly adequate. Um, while we're here, let's add a database for Zen4 to use. Create database, uh, and we'll just call it XF. And that's done. We're finished with MySQL now. So now let's get the Zenfora scripts themselves and move them into place. Uh, so just as you would with an FTP server or anything else like that, we're going to treat this as our 
um, remote web server directory and this is my uh, computer's download folder. Here's the Zen 4 package. I'm going to grab the upload folder from there and move it in here. And then I'm going to rename it to something quick and easy. I'm going to call it XF, but you can call it anything you like. And then we're going to come into the web server again and XF slash install. This will uh, just sort itself out. It, it does another requirements check uh, just to make sure that everything is up and running properly. We'll hit begin installation because we need to give it some uh, values for its config files. So the MySQL server is localhost on port 3306. The username is root, the password is empty, and the database name is xf. Let's hit save config, and that's all up and running and ready for us. But I'm not actually going to run it uh, in the browser window here because it's so much faster to run it on the command prompt. So I'm going to cd to c laragon www.xf, and then we just run php command.php xf colon install and we wait for it to scan the files they're all great and now it asks us for the name of the administrative user i'm just going to accept the defaults for now so the admin user is admin the password is going to be something quick and easy because this is just a test example uh, i'm accepting the default email address and the board title is going to be uh, xf laragon demo and the board url is http localhost almost xf and off it goes now this is going to take a little while so i'll pause the video here and come back to it when it's done okay that's completed so now we just need to uh, answer this little prompt about whether or not we would want to send anonymous usage statistics this is really useful for us at zen to know uh, what versions of php our customers have got uh, so that we can make a determination as to whether or not to uh, bump the requirements for the next version so if you don't mind, please say yes to that and uh, move on. Okay, let's head over to our newly installed Zenforo and uh, see that it's up and running properly. So we'll just get rid of that installation path and replace it with admin.php and give it the um, login details that I set up just now. And sure enough, there we are. We're up and running with our Exoft Laragon demo. Now, um, it has just occurred to me that we didn't restart the editor um, after we installed all those um, extensions. So let's do that now. We'll just quit that and then uh, start again uh, because sometimes it's a little bit funny about um, changing its configuration uh, without a restart in between. Uh, but let's go and check that everything is running as we expect it to be. Uh, so if we open up uh, index.php here, then you'll see that everything is nicely syntax highlighted and not only that, but if I hover um, over a particular method there, it will give me uh, various insights as to how it works. So uh, that's actually reading the PHP doc um, comments from uh, the method call uh, in its home. We can even right click on that and say, go to definition, and it will open up the corresponding script and jump straight to it. That is really great. Um, now let's talk about the debugger. Uh, to use the debugger, the first thing we're going to need to do is to add a configuration. So we'll go to run, add configuration, and add PHP. And uh, it'll create this launch.json file um, with two different configurations, a listen for xdebug uh, and a launch currently open script um, option. Uh, if I switch over to uh, this debugging uh, view, let me get rid of that launch.json, um, then we can turn that on. I have to allow that to go through the firewall and uh, here we are we're up and running now we have to get xdebug to be triggered by the browser and in order to do that we need to go and get a little extension so let's uh, just go and get the x debug helper uh, this is it here we're going to add that to chrome add extension and that's all fine and I just want to uh, pin that so that it's always there come back to this page here and refresh it with the um, extension in place and then I'm going to turn on debug and you'll see that the little bug goes green now the way that the debugger works is it allows the script to run and then it will pause at any point that it finds a breakpoint so let's uh, put a breakpoint into this here 
and uh, we can see that we're in listening mode. Uh, the debugger toolbar is up and running and ready. This is ready to debug, so let's hit refresh, and what we should um, is that it will stop at that point, except it won't, will it, because I'm actually using the uh, front end page, uh, not uh, the admin page. So let's come back here and put it into that script instead, the admin script. Okay, we're still running, uh, listening, you can tell because uh, this thing here changes color. Let's refresh that, and here we are. Now the execution has stopped on this uh, der equals double underscore der um, uh, statement. And if we switch over to the debug view, you can see that we've already set PHP version to PHP version and the dir um, directory um, variable is uninitialized. But we can skip over that and get to the next page and now dir is set to C Laragon WWXF. That's fantastic. Now let's uh, keep skipping on and uh, we're now on this line for XF start. Now we can either skip over that, which means it will just let it run and do whatever it wants, or we can inspect it further. So let's use this step into, and if we find ourselves inside the function call that was just being made, and we can carry on skipping through here and see, um, we can inspect everything that's available um, to that XF class. Uh, these double uh, colons mean that they are static. Uh, let's use this command to step out and we'll come back uh, here and then we're uh, ready to run xf run app. Let's go into run app and uh, you can see that we've, we're now in run app in the xf.php uh, script. Let's keep skipping through and uh, as you can see this is a great way to uh, inspect the way that an application runs um, in a way that uh, would really be quite difficult to follow um, if you weren't immediately familiar with the code. Let's try another debugging adventure. Um, this time I'm going to uh, check what input has come from here. Uh, I'm going to search for users um, called admin. Now uh, we're going to inspect this uh, to find out where that's going to submit and uh, we'll just have a look at the form. Uh, and the form for that tells me that we need to go to uh, users quick search. So that's going to be in the XF admin controller user controller and there's going to be an action called action quick search. Let's go get that. That's action search not to be confused with action quick search. Here it is. Uh, so I'm going to put a breakpoint on there, uh, which will catch this query um, command. Uh, let's just take that, uh, let's leave that running actually. Okay, let's run it. So we're ready to run, we're listening, hit search. Uh, we can we stop on that breakpoint that we already started, um, but let's get back into the debugging context and let it skip forward to here. And here we are, we're in uh, query for uh, this query um, and we can see that query is currently uninitialized, so let's skip it on one statement. And now we can see that the query is admin, that's what's been sent through. So uh, then it's going to ask if um, the query is a valid email. It's not, so I would expect that to skip, and it does. It's going to look to see if it's a valid IP. It's not. So it's going to set the criteria for the request to query and then it's going to reroute the controller. Well, what's reroute controller all about? Let's find out. Let's step into it. And here we are. We're inside reroute controller. Uh, and then we're in match uh, on the get new root match from the router. Let's step into that. Here we are in the router. Let's skip out and we'll go to the next one. There's get new root match. Uh, so as you can see, um, we can dig very quickly down into the code and find out where this stuff lives and how it works um, without having to know uh, a great deal about the code in the first place. So there we go. That's how the debugger works. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I would recommend it to everyone who wants to try to develop with Zenfora. So finally, we're going to take a look at just how clever the uh, integrated development environment can actually be uh, when it comes to writing Zenfora code or any other Zen, uh, PHP code for that matter. So here I am in the um, user controller, the user admin controller um, of Zenforo, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make essentially a copy of this 
uh, to show you just how much the system can help you when you start writing Zen 4.0 code. So let's start with a public function uh, action edit 2. And you'll notice that uh, the system is um, suggesting all sorts of uh, things as I start. Now I've typed param there and the actual thing I want is parameter bag so I can just hit down once. Uh, it gives me some insight about that. The namespace is in XF admin controller. Hit enter to allow it to continue and then let's add that. And here we are inside the function. Uh, automatically created the, uh, the closing brace uh, for me here. So let's see just how much help it's going to give me as I try to write a copy of action edit. So user equals this. And now as soon as I complete this, it gives me all of the options that this class actually has. So I want assert. user, not Isaac, user, it exists, there it is. And what do I want? I want params, uh, user ID, there it is. And you can see here that it's uh, telling me that the first argument to this method is the ID that I should be working with. And then I'm looking at the next one. So I'll put a comma and go into the next one and it underlines the next parameter, which is the with parameter to pull additional data along with the user. Um, and it tells me that it is an array or a string or null. So I'm going to use the array option. So open brackets for an array and I want uh, activity and option and profile and privacy close off the uh, argument there and we're on to the next line. So then this assert can edit user and there it is. It's already made the suggestion for me. Um, there is only one parameter which is the user which is telling me that it's there. So let's just pass in the user. I've only got to type a couple of characters and it knows that user is in scope for this method. So I'll have that. Close that off and then we will return this user add edit. There we go. On user. That was fairly painless, wasn't it? It would have been even better if I'd been a competent typist, but I'm not. So we'll just have to deal with that as is.